Hey guys, welcome to your third Python image manipulation video. And in here I have our JS folder. If we open that up, you can see I have a new uh, folder for today's video. And I also have a new folder called images. Now, in that uh, folder I have a bunch of pictures. These so are actually um, iPhone background images that I got. I got them because they're small images and they're fast to work with and they're also pretty colorful. So I have those. I'll provide a link in the description below so you guys can work with me as we're manipulating these images together. Um, if I forget to put the link, just annoy me in the comment section. I'll make sure to upload it. Okay. So now that you know what's going on in that folder, um, open up JS. So today's objective is actually going to be to make a grayscale image. Um, but before we can actually start doing that, you're going to need how to uh, use some of the Jython's basic functions, um, stuff like loading an image, Showing an, showing an image and making a picture object and all those sorts of things and I'm actually going to show you how to do this in the command area since I don't want to save any of that stuff um, but actually before we get started let's actually save this file right now before I forget okay so navigate to our JS folder right here um, video 2 and let's call this grayscale P1. Okay. Sweet. Okay. And the command area. So to make a picture object to manipulate, we need a picture. And how to access a picture um, on a computer is through a path um, to your to your image. So on a Windows machine that would be C colon backslash blah 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 um, and on Mac it'd be uh, I think users or, or tilde users slash something 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 um, but in JS that's different your path gets stored in a variable and you that variable gets assigned through a function called pick a file so essentially your path is going to be equal to pick oops pick a file and notice um, these are capital letters so every time you spell a word um, you would capitalize it so spell a word would be like that as well I know it's um, I think it's called camelcate uh, uh, camel case um, meaning that every um, star of a new word has a capital letter so you'll just have to get used to that and that might cause you a lot of bugs but you get used to it really fast so when I'm going to press enter pick a file is going to open up um, the finder and I'm going to navigate to find um, the, the image I want to work with since we're dealing with images, if we were dealing with audio files, I'd get an audio file, but we're dealing with images. So here's my JS version of Finder. And actually, it's in JS images. We're we'll working with picture one today. So now, path, I just printed out. You see it's users, um, William Fizer. Uh, my name, the desktop, the folder man, and the image we're working with. Good. Now, there's another function in JS called uh, make picture. So, our picture, make picture. And this, this uh, function creates a picture object which we can work with to manipulate our image. And this is actually pretty crucial. 
to actually make an image object or else we can't work with images at all. So, and this takes a path to an image. So we're going to make, we're going to put that variable path, which is our path right here. And we're going to plug it in, um, as a, an argument for our function make picture. So now picture is now a picture object. And if I print picture, you can see it is now a picture object. And it knows that this picture is stored here on the hard drive, has a height of this and the width of that. Okay, all good. Now we can also call a function called show, which takes a picture object. We're going to show our picture. And once I call that, it opens up this, and we can see um, what our picture is. Okay. So now that you guys know how to go in and um, get a file, file path, make a picture, and actually show that picture, we're good to start actually making our function grayscale. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, if you didn't know before, a grayscale image is an image which has all equal values of red, blue, and green. Meaning, um, what we're going to have to do is loop through every single pixel and adjust the red, green, and blue values so that they are all the same. So let's create a function. So use the keyword def and say grayscale. Okay. And we're going to pass in an image because we need an image to manipulate. So let's just call it um, a picture. Now Here's um, something that a lot of people have a hard time understanding is how we're getting those the pixels in our image. Now, JS has a built-in function called getPixels. And what getPixels does is it uh, returns a list of all the pixels in our image. But it's often contrasted with another function called getPixel, uh, singular, which we'll look at later, which gets an individual pixel. So you can't mess up getPixels with getPixel. This returns a list. This returns a pixel object. It's very different. And this list is a list of pixel objects. Okay. So we're going to use a for loop. So for a pixel in get pixels. Oops. Uh, I don't count caps. And pass. And get pixels takes um, one argument, and that is a picture. And we're going to pass in our picture parameter in here. So I'll get um, a loop through each pixel in our pixel list. Just to clarify, get pixels returns a list like this. So it'd be like pixel one, and pixel two, pixel three, and so on. And these are all pixel objects, meaning they each have um, an X and a Y coordinate. They each have a RGB value. They all have uh, all that stuff in it. So that's really good. So what we want to do now is find that um, grayscale color value which we can use to create a new color and assign to that pixel and eventually return a grayscale image.
So to get the individual red, green, and blue values for a pixel, um, Jython has a built-in function for exactly doing that. Now, I'm going to create a new variable called red. This is going to be the amount of red that's going to be contained in this pixel, this certain pixels within our larger list of pixels. Um, so each pixel is going to have an individual red value stored in this variable. So red equals get red, oops, like the, oh, uh, we got get red, and this takes a pixel object, and our pixel object is called px right here, because we're looking through all the pixels. And the reason I didn't call um, this variable red lowercase is because red is actually, uh, you see it's uh, purple, or yeah, purple. Uh, this means that it's a Jython reserved um, word, which actually has the value of 255, I believe, for red or something like that. So you can't use this, it's already uh, built in uh, in Jython function. So make sure you have red but with a capital letter. Now I'm also going to get the green and the blue values for this pixel. So green, there's a function called get green that you can use. And similarly for blue, there's a function for get blue. So in these variables, we have the red, the green, and the blue values for this pixel right here. And remember, the definition of a grayscale image is that the red, the green, and the blue values are all the same for every single picture, uh, pixel in that picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to create a new color. So, uh, gray is going to equal uh, the red value. And remember, red, green, and blue are all integers. So they're numbers. Blue, therefore, we can just divide by 3. And what this does is it gets the average of the red, the green, and the blue values for that pixel. And what we can do now is actually create a new color object and then set the color. So um, uh, gray color is equal to, and there's a function called make color. And this takes a red, a green, and a blue value. And you might be tempted to put these in as your red, green, and blue values, but remember, they all have to be the same. So we're going to pass in gray for the red, the green, and the blue values. So gray, gray, and gray again. And one last thing, now that we have a new color, we actually have to set the the color of this pixel to gray so set color of a pixel to a color these are the two parameters that this takes so we're going to set the color of our oops 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 our pixel object px up here to the color which color the gray color that we want okay and once this um, finishes looping through all our pixels in the image, gets their red, green, blue values, creates a new color, actually that's this, and sets that new color, what we want to do is actually return um, the picture. 
so we can store it in a variable. Now, don't forget to press um, load program because then it, it won't be loaded. This function won't be updated, if you will, um, in the command area. Now, how do I pull up this command area? Okay. So remember, we have a function called grayscale that we want to use, and we have a variable called picture. So just, I'm just going to show it to remind you guys we have this beautiful picture right here, and we want to convert it to a grayscale. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, we call it gray image and since this uh, grayscale function returns an image that's why I'm storing in a variable so gray image is going to equal to a our grayscale um, function and the, our picture it has the name picture and if I run this and now I can, I have a new variable called gray image. You see, it is definitely a picture object because it says picture, and not surprisingly has the same width and height. And now if I show it, so I'm going to show um, the picture. So this is our picture. Oh, it actually transformed the original, which is pretty odd. And and our grayscale image, our gray image, should actually be the same. Okay. Um, so it actually directly manipulated um, the image, which I didn't think it would do. Um, let me just bring this down. So we passed in an image, which was called picture, uh, through our command line. We looped through all the pixels. We got the red, the green, and the blue values. We made a new color called gray. We made a new color object of that gray color. And we set that pixel to the new gray color. And we returned the picture. But we actually didn't need to return it because it... Um, dynamically changed it as we went. If we wanted to avoid uh, manipulating the original uh, image would pass through as a parameter, we would have need to make made a duplicate of that image to return and that's probably what I'll be doing for the rest of the videos as it is a lot more useful just so we can reuse the same image over and over again. So guys, I hope you learned something about image manipulation today, and thank you for watching.